Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I look like a ghost. I don't know why today. I, the monitors just seem brighter. Look at me. I literally look like a ghost. Like, and, and in New Jersey, ghosts are pretty scary, so trust me, you don't you don't want to mess with New Jersey ghosts. They'll, they have the opposite. We have a, this is a... a a ghost tan right now, you know, still GTL though, even in the grave. Uh, before I get started with the weekly Q&A, I just want to thank you all. And I know that seems like a really strange thing to do at the start of a Mondays with Mr. Happy video when I haven't explained myself yet. But um, it's been an interesting last month or two. Uh, a lot of things have been rolling into place for me uh, and a lot of really exciting opportunities are opening up. Uh, you know, we're going to have the community team for Final Fantasy XIV on State of the Realm this week, so definitely going to be a great week to try and catch the show live. Uh, on top of that, we've had deals with, uh, you know, plenty of games. Not even deals, really. That's the wrong word. But, you know, we got to do that promotion for Square Enix for, uh, you know, for Patch 3.1. We got to do, and they provided us with a bunch of giveaways for, for players in the stream. Uh, we got to do a really special event this weekend for Devillion, which is another MMO that's coming out. An MMO action RPG hybrid. Uh, we got a bunch of people. We got a code in the chat from Tryon World for a thousand free beta keys. And we were doing 20 versus 20 PvP in this game together. And it was just a giant mesh of love. We were leveling together in raid groups breaking off into groups of three to complete dungeons it was just a massive amount of fun and on top of that we have more opportunities coming up soon over on the live stream so i don't have those things without you i also don't have them without mel being as maze as amazing as she is so you know big shout out to her as well but i don't i you know you guys create the demand and uh i just wanted to say thank you now i know a lot of you have noticed there's been less YouTube content lately. I'm not oblivious to that. A lot of people are saying, where are the rest of the story videos? Where are, where's your diadem video? Uh, where's the A4 Savage Guide? Where's the A1 and 2 Savage Guide even? Like a lot of people have been asking me about these things. And I will be upfront and I will be honest with you guys. The amount of time investment for some of those videos has become a little bit tougher on me. I'm able to do them usually within the first week. If they don't get done in that time, it becomes very difficult to go back to them. It's been the same dealer deal with the Healer Happy videos. And you know what? There's a lot of video series that I want to be able to go back to and revive. Uh, one that has a little bit less time investment that I know a lot of people are still asking for is the Bestiary series. Uh, and I got to figure out how I'm going to do it. Because YouTube was my first love. You know, I, I love broadcasting first, but YouTube in terms of content creation. That's the thing. I want to create content. I ultimately do want to create content, but it is becoming increasingly hard with the number of things going on over at Twitch to find the time to do these things on YouTube. So I'm trying to figure out a solution right now. You know, I won't abandon YouTube. I know a lot of people are afraid of that, and I just wanted to address it here in this video. I will not abandon it. You know, those of you who just watch me here who don't come over to Twitch, you know, you're responsible for me paying off my student loans every month. You know, the way I handle my business is YouTube income pays off student loans, Twitch income, specifically from ad revenue and subscribers. Uh, that goes to surviving and saving money for the future and then anything else goes back into the stream donations are used on giveaways they're used on playing games that are requested by the viewers so uh, you know I I'm not gonna leave you guys alone but I have to start seriously considering uh, how I spend my time where it's spent and what it's spent on so I'm open to ideas from you guys you know I've been discussing it behind the scenes with Mel quite a bit the difficulty of basically what feels like working two completely different careers instead of one career that unifies YouTube and Twitch so I just wanted to be upfront with you guys that I'm aware of some of the things going on and I'll work on it because I love what I do and it's a blessing every day I wake up and I get to do these things and I have every single one of you who watch these videos and those of you who watch me on Twitch, those who follow me on both or one and whatever for making it possible. So I'll do my best for you guys. I'll look into some solutions. I'll look into reviving some of those old series because I know a lot of you still look for them. You still check your subscription box every day and I've been doing nothing but letting you down. All right, so I almost went to cut to the actual questions and I forgot to do this right here. The videos. I asked for your feedback on this last week and people liked it, so I'm just going to keep doing it this way for now, but uh, in the future I'm going to make it a little bit more formal, because at this point you're just, it's like a towel, you know, that, uh, the wall, you know, all that uh, other stuff. So I just want to, I just want to shorten this up. By the way, for this middle one right here, this is the Pharaoh Series Hard Mode Guide, even if you've already done Pharaoh Series, just click on the video, 
I think I think you'll like what is actually on the other side of that video because it's uh, it's a meme. Let's just say that. Uh, and hopefully you enjoy the other stuff that I got here in the middle of the video. We're also going to have a clip there as well. But I forgot to say something. When I was talking about all those things I'm thankful for, thanking you for all that stuff, the whole point was for me to say that's what I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving. <laughs> like an idiot. I completely forgot the entire point I was saying thank you. So I'm thankful for all those things I said before. I'm thankful for my wonderful girlfriend who helps make these things possible for you guys and for me and for us uh, as a whole. And, well, I'm just thankful for another year to be doing what I do. So let's move on to some of those questions, shall we? All right, so the first question, I've actually taken the time to read ahead of it, and it's not too long of one, so let's get into it. Hey, Happ, I know you've had this question a million times. Well, that's always a great way to start. Although, honestly, I wouldn't say I've had this question a million times. This is actually one that's uh, pretty unique of a scenario. Two questions. So, first, hope you had a happy patch day, but you're saying that you've unlocked all the new content and queued in as a paladin, and every time joined as a replacement when I was a first-timer there at mostly the last boss. So, what is up with those other players and other tanks? I beat the two new dungeons before I got the map achievement and got through the entire Void Arc with only a pre-made. Before that, I only saw the two last bosses of the Void Arc. Well, let's answer the second question first and I can combine my answers. Let's, let's just do that. The second question has a story. You were in your roulette and the tank would not use Dark Side. You guys tried to communicate with him. However, the party ultimately ended up vote kicking the other two members of your party you voted against it but the healer told you that this would happen someday later anyway i agreed with the decision after that my question is was this really the right solution so is it the right solution to kick a tank who's playing improperly if it was the right solution to kick someone who's playing improperly every time i went into the duty finder then the duty finders would never get done not turning on dark side definitely slows the dungeon that's playing the job in a suboptimal manner if it's slowing the dungeon to what should be a 20 minute dungeon down to a 50 minute dungeon or a 40 minute dungeon then it may be potentially okay the bigger problem is not that he was playing incorrectly though it was his refusal to communicate and i also just pressed space bar so it scrolled down my apologies with that uh, and so that's the bigger problem really with the duty finder is the lack of incentive to communicate with the other players you are playing with I've actually seen and honestly, it's not something I usually participate in I've seen an incredible increase in people who say hello at the start of dungeons as of late And honestly, it's refreshing to me even if they don't communicate too much through the rest of the dungeon It lets people know that you are there and you can see the chat, which is pretty important I have also seen more people communicating in the dungeons and you know what it's also because I've been running with a few people uh, you know, when I'm streaming, and they are more social inside of these dungeons. And honestly, it feels like everyone who's in the dungeon is enjoying it more because of that. The issue is, of course, you know, people who don't communicate. And when it comes to things like this, I usually just brush it aside and say, you know what, it'll take more time to get it done this way than it would if I had just sucked it up. They don't want to listen. Eventually, like the healer said, would have happened someday to him anyway. I'm not that guy to be the person to do that. Unless the person just downright says starts insulting you you know like oh, i don't need to use dark side it's a waste of mp you're an idiot people who think they're right with no sort of backing to it uh it frustrates me to no end and it's also bad practice because he's going around telling other people the way that it's supposed to be done and it's incorrect i've only had that happen a few times and it's really only in those scenarios where i think tanks are in the wrong now speaking of tanks it seems that you are wondering why you keep joining in these dungeons in progress well first of all you're much more likely to get a party in progress as a tank that well you're much more you're you're more likely to get a party in progress nowadays because the people waiting for queues are waiting forever and the tanks that are doing void arc especially are usually waiting a long long time especially on the primal data center ether data center is really bad too but because there's much more popularity in tanks this patch in this expansion especially in that of warriors and paladins and there's only three tank slots available in the void arc it causes the queues to be insanely long what ends up happening is a lot of tanks will get that piece and just leave they don't even care about the Mihachi farthing, or they've already got it, and we're just trying to get the piece, and they're sick and tired of the queue times. They didn't even want to finish the dungeon. What ends up happening is tanks join in late, usually means they got somewhat of a shorter queue, which is always good for them. Uh, ultimately, there's not much that can be done outside of increase the, the amount of tanks that are available in these 24-man raids. There's not really much more you can do to ensure that tanks are able to fit into these slots. The only other way to do it is to allow flex spots where pallet where tanks or DPS can fill that area, but that kind of throws off the balance of the fight and ultimately will lower the general speed of the dungeon, probably creating more of an imbalance than a balance itself. So there's a lot of things that can 
be done better. There's a lot of things that are done wrong, but ultimately, is that really the right solution? I'd say no, but I do agree with the healer. Would have happened to that guy eventually anyway. As for your dungeons, tanks, don't know why they're leaving on the dungeons, but on Void Arc, I can probably see their reason. All right, next question. Sup, Happy? Love your videos. I can't get over how ghostly I look. It's, it's scaring me, to be honest. Like, I need to go outside and, like, just stand in the sun or just turn a monitor off or something. Quick question. I play on Behemoth End since the end of the last patch. I was logging only to do roulette and went to play other games like Dragon Quest Heroes. And she should name it Dragon Quest Warriors. Would be a great name joke. Haha. -ha. Or MGS5. But now with the patch, I noticed Behemoth is empty. Party Finder has so few parties. Do people know if you're moving away and why? A lot of people are moving away from other servers. A lot of people are specifically moving off the Primal Data Center right now because it has some sort of issue with the Duty Finder where even DPS are waiting an insane amount of time. I've not seen this issue on the Ether Data Center, but there is indefinite, there, uh, indefinitely, there is definitely something wrong with the Duty Finder over on that Primal Data Center. I can't explain it. I don't know why. Well, there's also been a huge exodus to some of the more popular raid services, Sky Caliber and Gilgamesh. So uh, I'm just seeing a lot of that nowadays because people who are serious about Endgame want to get serious about Endgame. And the people who aren't serious about Endgame are the ones that aren't generally in the Party Finder, the ones that you don't generally see in those areas. Not exactly sure what is going on, but I can tell you that, yes, people are moving away, whether it be because of the Duty Finder issues or because they're looking for more serious content groups. Next question. Good morning, Mr. Happy. Good evening to you. Well, it's evening for me right now. I'm loving Thornton Extreme, haven't beat it yet, getting close. I also enjoy Lords of Verminion. Only thing, there's not a lot of Party Finder for the last phase, 6 and 9th for Thornton. People say it's too hard for casuals to try. I do not agree. I'm trying to play Lords of Verminion tournament matches, but I barely see 7 9 people there, and they're not doing tournament matches. Going forward, what should SE focus their dev time on? Casual content or hardcore mid-core? Mid-core, to me, seems like the best place to be. Thornton is a middle-core fight. Let us be completely clear right now. Thornton hits you in, in many ways. He's very similar to Ravana. He hits you with a bunch of mechanics all at the same time, lightens up on the mechanics for about half a minute to 45 seconds, and then hits you with them all again. Ravana, very similar. Doesn't spam mechanics on you. He'll hit you with a mechanic. He'll hit you with a bunch of mechanics at the same time. Take a break and hit you with mechanics all at the same time. And he's pretty vulnerable in between those times. I think that Thornton Extreme is actually a good Extreme Primal. For the less hardcore players to get into and it's a far more fun and challenging it's far more fun and far more satisfyingly challenging than a lot of other fights uh, Layla Bell uses this term the phasing it's very clear when you've hit a new tier in the fight and it's very satisfying to reach your next dragon's eye or next phase in the fight something I very much agree with Layla on as for the Lords of Verminion tournament, uh, you have to be very careful. What's going on with the Lords of Verminion tournament is that the tournament matches prioritize people that are in your zone. So, if you are in the same instance as many other people, and a lot of people don't know this, that if you keep re-rolling into the instance, you can land in different ones. Uh, you can just roll until you're in the same one. And since it prioritizes those people, those people are generally playing together. So it sounds like you're getting thrown into other matches. Another thing, those are most popular on Tuesdays. Or, I'm sorry, whatever day. I don't know that that's when the tournament's reset, so I shouldn't say that. Most popular on tournament reset day. So I try to get most of your matches done on that first day. If not, talk to your free company, talk to your link shell, see if you can get people queuing up for the matches as well. Best option. I think they're, I think this the team is doing a generally good thing, trying to develop content in all areas. One thing I think they will do more looking forward, also a lot of people are just doing the diadem because they want to get the new gear. That's where the majority of people probably are. Um, they should... I think they should continue to develop similar to this, but they need to consider middle core content a lot more. I think that's one part of the game that is lacking more than anything. There's a lot of casual, there's not so much mid core, and there's barely any hardcore. That's fine for the hardcore because there's not too many of us, so we need more middle core content. That's my belief. Next question. Hey, Mr. Wacky Taffy Happy. I love Wacky Taffy. I got two questions. Is it Wacky Taffy? I don't remember. Uh, I've got two questions. No offering this week for shame for shame. I do agree for shame for shame. When is Square Enix going to buff White Mage Stone Skin? Never. I mean, it seems like you weren't taking that question too seriously because of the little emote there at the end, but now they're not going to. They deliberately lowered it so that it wouldn't be a specific advantage White Mage held over the other jobs when they had their other niche that they were sort of filling at the time. And how do you think new recipes for crafting are going to impact the market board? Same, they'll pretty much be super expensive right when they first come out, and then they level out to a price that's sometimes hard for certain people to afford, but there's a general market for them. I'm interested in seeing the strength of crafting gear in patch 3.2 because it's supposed to 
to be stronger and well we'll see if it's a little bit more accessible or a little bit more reasonable for crafters and gatherers to get invested in the gear that comes out at that time hoping it will be because the market could sh uh, sure could use a jump for things that aren't just x potions draconian potions and food needs more market although the sky pirate stuff has been a pretty nice bump up all right so we, i had a repeat question here repost from week 61 hi mr happy of happiness i hope you mr happy have a happy sunday i have uh have a asked the question before but you may still have some more soldiery stop giving me soldiery nobody uses soldiery stop it anyway i had this idea since our hot bars are already packed that if they wanted to introduce new abilities to the game they could replace old abilities let's just say this if they add any new abilities to the game without replacing old abilities, I will lose my shit. They have way too many abilities in the game as is. And granted, it actually makes for some pretty satisfying rotational learning. Once you've learned it, it's muscle memory. You know, you learn it maybe in the first 30 seconds of a fight. You have to do it a little bit differently in order to, you know, make up for whatever moves the boss may be doing. But that's part of the fun of it is figuring out that rotation and you need a lot of buttons to do that or the rotation is just very very simple but i do agree with you they should definitely replace some old abilities if they intend to add new ones still if not the other option i see is adding skill trees where you don't have necessarily every ability on your bar and you can choose certain abilities to fill certain slots perhaps you like shield bash on your paladin but you know what maybe this is a fight where shield bash just isn't useful maybe you need shield I don't know shield bigger shield I don't know blocks more damage like it's a passive trait that blocks more damage as opposed to but you lose shield bash in the process uh that's something I could see being very useful I also see that being completely imbalanced but it was just an example uh I would like to see something along those lines I think this is the point where they can prove that a skill tree is not always that just everybody plays the same thing here it can actually be very situational if operated in such a way that it's dependent on the individual abilities that you're checking Next question. Hey, Haps. Not a 14 question. First of all, I would like to let everyone know it's not only 14 questions you're supposed to be asking here, so don't feel bad about that. What's your favorite old school RPG? And I mean old school, like NES, SNES, N64. Uh, Final Fantasy VI, or Final Fantasy III as it launched in America, is my favorite Final Fantasy game. But that being said, I missed a lot of really old RPGs. Super Mario RPG, though, probably as a kid, because I played it well before I knew Final Fantasy existed. That is I'm not lying. I had Super Mario RPG. I just knew knew what it was i didn't find out about final fantasy at first till seven and the first one i played was eight so super mario rpg super simple game not very skill dependent but i loved it it was a masterpiece in my mind and i know not everyone agrees with that but it is probably my favorite rpg growing up i know there's options legend of man and all that stuff you know chrono trigger or whatnot but super mario rpg don't know what it is holds a special place in my heart all right, we got another section right here. Uh, so the three video links in your last Monday. Oh, that's right. Oh, I got to go back and edit that. So guys, at this point, I just realized that the beginning of the video is wrong. You know that whole thing I was doing? Oh, no, that's this side. Where on, you know, your left of the video, there's the videos right here. Yeah, I'm going to go back and re-record that. And just for hilarity's sake, I'm going to leave me telling you that I'm going to go re-record that in right now. So the opening you're going to see is going to be different than the opening I first did. Which is really unfortunate because I said, no, you know what? Fuck it. All right, next question. Hey, Haps, how you doing? The three video links in your last Mondays with Miss... I forgot to do that at the start of the video. I just did it last week. I already forgot to do it. Thank you for reminding me, Maggie. So you're going to see a cut at the beginning of the video. This was the point in which I realized I forgot to do that. So now you'll know why there was a cut when I did that part where I was like, I think it's this way. Yeah, here we go. This way on your left on my right. There you go. Right there. The videos. I have to go back to the beginning of the video and do that. So re-recording. Yay. Uh, but I had a pretty long message there. So I don't want to redo the whole thing. So I'm glad you enjoyed that, by the way. Uh, th thank you thank you for reminding me, because that would have really sucked to forget. I have a couple of medium to long questions. All right, well, I'm going to try and shorten them as best as I possibly can. What does it take to be able to join Elysium? I would like to say, first of all, do not handle recruitment. I do not have any seat of power within Elysium. I have no responsibilities. I am simply a raid member. So take anything I say here with a grain of salt. And as you can say, I read the requirements needs anyone who has a passion for clearing hard content ASAP and fulfill the rest of the requirements they can join. I feel like there's more to this. There are a tryout period or something. This all depends on... Uh, on what kind of position you're trying out for i mean it's a hardcore free company and it comes down to a little bit more than you need a passion you know a lot of people say they want to clear hard content it's a little bit deeper than that i really don't feel like i'm in the liberty to say anything more 
than that. I just, I feel like it's not going to be the right answer and it's not going to accurately represent what they're looking for. Just know that experience and results are two big things that yet will be looked at when you join. As for tryout periods, I think I've seen some people do tryout periods. I don't know. I don't pay attention to it too much. Just, I would, I would just keep those things in mind. Results and experience, two big things. Second, uh, my group and I are progressing in A3 Savage and we're having trouble meeting Hand of Pain DPS. That's kind of rough. We're about 2 to 4% off. You can't be 4% off. There's no way you can. There's literally no way to be 4% off of it. If you're now, That would mean that you literally didn't attack them after, after um, equal concentration cast. Because one of them is going to be 8% above the other. Your goal, like let's for say, for example, they're both at 36. It's not the perfect example because what? You know, better example. One's at 35, one's at 37. You do equal concentration. One of them goes to 40, and one of them goes to 32. Your goal is to bring them within 4% of each other, not equal their health out. It's not. We don't need to bring the 40% down to the 32%. Your goal is to bring the 40% down under 36%. Now, say, with that being said, more some damage will probably be done to the small hand in the process. Let's say it falls down to 31.5%. In this case, you would need to bring the big hand down to below 33... Um, no, 34%. No, I meant to say uh, below 35.5%. I think I said 34% before. No, you need to bring it below 36% is what I meant to say. So you can't be 4% off. That's impossible for you to be that way. Um, it just isn't. I think you're misevaluating. It sounds like you're a fraction of a percentage off that's what it sounds like to me a fraction of a percentage it says 36 it says 32 but the numbers aren't aligning so i uh i think that that's the issue but it sounds like your monk is not doing it's under 1k yeah it's not good they gotta learn monk if you're doing under 1k uh raid dps with the gear we have available now in a3 savage and during by the hand of pain check that's that's really off. That's like three or four hundred points off of where you can be, and at least two or three hundred points off of where you should be. A real a good monk guide. I don't know. Like I, I'm sure they're out there. I'm just not apprised to every guide that there is for every job. Uh, has Dervy done one? He did one for Dragoon. I don't know. I don't know where there's a monk guide, but he definitely needs to step it up. Like being under one k there is, frankly, unacceptable. Uh, you know people always talk about how the tanks and the healers have multiple responsibilities this is the dps's one responsibility is to do damage and that's really really low right there group composition is dark warrior white mage scholar monk ninja bard black mage beautiful it's a beautiful composition nothing wrong with it it's fucking brilliant composition and i love it uh of course people are gonna say no the dragoon's better Eh, you're fine but the monk needs to definitely step it up uh just i don't know just google it that's it that's all i can say google it oh right next question happy sunday hap glad you paid attention and know that this ha that i usually record the sunday evenings uh first time askers so have some god dips fucking yeah that's a guy who knows how to give a first time bonus right there anyway my question has to do with the platform i play on i play on a ps4 with a low pop server and have a great time main monk machine is summoner so this typically isn't a problem but sometimes i like to play tank and healer but i'm afraid to do alexander savage or even old stuff like coil so you're afraid to do any game raids main reason is because of the fact i don't have a keyboard so it takes a while to communicate and social anxiety stops me from reaching out to excuse me fine groups i've yet to complete business market stream due to poor groups and lack of communication my main question is how do i get a group when i can barely communicate in game as well as pc players so for the social anxiety unfortunately that is a very personal issue um it's just that's rough you got it it's it's something that you'll have to get past and honestly i used mmos to get over social anxiety when i was a teenager so i really think that you need to get a keyboard and i think it will help you get over the social anxiety you say you can't communicate don't say you can't communicate as well there's 20 30 dollar keyboards out there that'll plug into a ps4 just fine I'd say, I know that that's obviously demanding money out of your pocket, but that's a really low-end option that is available to you. I would go invest in one, you know, regardless. I don't know how old you are. I don't know if, you know, you're still living with your parents. And I don't mean that insulting. I don't, just, I don't know what age group you fit in. Because I remember when I was 14, I had to beg my parents, hey, can we go get this, Log this $30 Logitech keyboard? And, you know, I had to beg them because it wasn't easy. So, I mean, I'm just imagining you could also be older and just don't have a lot of money. And it's just an investment that you can't make. 
Um, but I think that if you can make the investment, if you're just not getting the keyboard because of the social anxiety, I think that may be the case right here, then I think you just need to do it. I mean, there's some things that you can really get over just by jumping in head first. I don't think that's roller coasters and I don't think that's airplane rides because I'm still scared to death of both. But social anxiety, I can tell you from firsthand experience, I dealt with it, I got over it through MMOs and I did it with a 20 to $30 Lutch Tech keyboard. So hopefully that's a little bit of help to you, my friend. All right, next question. Hey, Haps, first time poster, long time viewer here. Go ahead and take that big old SO bonus. Been playing 14 for almost a year and a half now, and although I feel like I'm a pretty competent player, I've never made the jump to do end game hardcore rating that I've always wanted to do. Part of it is I'm super casual, I've seen with friends and stuff like Alex Savage, it doesn't sound appealing. So I've been trying to find some groups that are the party finder, though admittedly not for Savage, taking baby steps trying to get Thor in extreme. I like that. I like that. I actually appreciate that you not jumping in too far. You're trying to ease your way into it. I appreciate that with you, my friend. Every time I find a group where my role is open, I'm an Astral Ocean main, but of all that stuff, I always get the same line. If you don't have teams, speak you're out of the party it's a common place for anything that isn't easy to always require team speak i'm sorry i don't have to read the rest of this question because i can answer that right there no it shouldn't be but here in america it is i don't need team speak to communicate with people i am perfectly capable of communicating through text and relaying ideas but a lot of people are not and a lot of people can't think on the fly and usually the main desire for team speak there's two sides of it they're afraid that some of the people they're playing with are incapable of noticing mechanics and reacting to them. So they get people on TeamSpeak because there's bound to be at least one person in that group that can call mechanics and can ensure that people have their attentions where they need to be. The other side of it is that the person who is actually forming the group may need this service done for them. So is TeamSpeak a requirement? It is a lot here. I don't think it's necessary. But of course, I'm not your standard party finder player so my view is honestly probably skewed uh but i know that the japanese party finders are able to do it without the team speak i just by that by that measure other than our culture being different i just feel that it should be the same way for us second question do you think that given i mentioned in a casual free company is it possible to find a static raid group that doesn't require you to join i know people that are just in link shells that raid all the time granted gilgamesh is a more raid centric server but it is common if people like you if people uh enjoy your presence then unless they're competing for some sort of world class position in the raiding scene joining a free company is realistically shouldn't be a mandatory thing competent players matters the most that's my that's my thought all right this next question i don't even have to read but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, hi, dear Mr. Happy. Question from Week 67. My girlfriend has been playing 14. I consider myself a more hardcore player, and I'd like to help her improve her DPS. Since she's a main Dragoon, I don't have that job level. Derby's how to Dragoon per second. Easy answer. Big shout out. Check it out here. I'll do this. Put it right here. Boom. Click here. Derby's how to Dragoon per second. He'll get you golden right there, my friend. All right, next question. Hey, Haps, I had a thought about that. My, I had a thought that might ultimately prove unpopular, but what do you think would happen if the devs decided to remove the ability to swap stances and battles for tanks or healers in order to reduce the load on them and challenge the DPS more? Um, I'll read your examples. Lock out a healer. Uh, lock out cleric stance as a hot bar. Likewise, lock out defiance and deliverance. Oh God, you've just made very many warriors very unhappy. Uh, shield and sword oath, grit. So first of all, you're locking out the tanking, uh, the tanking stances too. You're not just locking out the op the options for DPS stances, which I think is somewhat of a fair notion to take. Uh, literally, just remove them all's abilities. First of all, it removes the amount of clutter on the hot bar. Not necessarily a bad thing. Second of all, it means that generally boss damage has to be lowered because the the uh, statistical benefits of these oaths and the strategic use of the oaths is being removed. Bosses need to hit less. If someone's going to be taking 25% more damage all the time, boss needs to deal 25% less damage all the time. That can be a little bit interesting because I have a feeling it's quite abusable, so that might be a rough situation for it. There's also the skill required to know which stance to use when. So it is also removing a skill requirement of people. And it also is a little bit difficult because you have to remember deliverance and defiance are required for certain abilities. The only way around that, fit in the uh, the wrath and abandon mechanic naturally into the job or just make it one, just wrath, and you can use any of the abilities. Um, your specific point of reducing the load on them and challenge the DPS more. That doesn't actually do this. That does this doesn't actually accomplish that. Here's why: if you reduce the amount of potential damage that tanks can put out, you then have to subsequently remove the maximum amount of health from bosses. That's go I think that goes without saying. The thing is, ultimately, you're making it easier to DPS as a tank. 
So if they have to do that, it just makes the DPS, it just makes the DPS that the tanks contribute even more important. Because now you deliberately had to lower the boss's health to make up for this loss. So now when the tanks are able to squeeze out more DPS, it's even more beneficial onto the fight. So, and healers as well. So I, well, of course, the thing is without Cleric Stance, you do pretty shit damage. Which means they'd also have to buff the damage that comes out from healers because, well, Cleric Stance is pretty popular when you're soloing once you get it. So, you know, you have to consider all of these separate avenues that it's taking. And also, you saying that Dark Side needs to remain. That's not true. Deliverance and Defiance are required for abilities, and you left those out. So, Dark Side, you literally would just remove that and remove the requirement from the other skills. I don't think this actually reduces the load. I think you need mechanics from the bosses that reduce the load on tanks and healers to perform more damage. Not just remove the skill tiers, or not remove, not remove, uh, the skill ceiling of the tank jobs in order to accomplish that. All right, next question. Hey, Apps, good Sunday Monday to you. Good Sunday Monday to you too. Uh, simple question: As a casual player, realize that savages in this tier is out of their uh, out of their reach. Is it silly for me to try and work out DPS rotations to practice them on all the DPSs I have? Okay, let me let me talk about this thought. I recently had a discussion with some raid members about regarding when we were uh, leveling alts. And uh, ultimately, we decided it was best for each of us to have two, and specifically ones that were overlappable. Uh, for example, Ninja, Monk, and Dragoon. I'm leveling my Ninja and my Monk, and our other DPS has Monk and Dragoon leveled. That way, we can cover all possible combinations, minus the very odd Dragoon, Dragoon, or Monk, Monk, which have very, very few... Actually, no, we can cover that. Uh, Dragoon, Dragoon, or Ninja, Ninja. The two very, very unlikely... Uh, scenarios as opposed to monk monk which has had its uses in the past so it is technically considered a viable strategy against bosses that have multiple targets that deal very high magic damage that being said with dark knight in the game it's a little bit different now but it's still an option that was made available it also makes dragon monk dragon ninja and ninja monk all available within the group i think you should do this a similar thing find two jobs that that you need to master within your area if you're a caster dps know how to play both black mage and summoner if you like barden machine learn how to play both of them don't learn how to play every single one of them because then you're a jack of all trades and a master of none now i'm not saying you can't master them all i'm just saying you're spreading your skill set a little bit thin instead of really nailing down and mastering a couple of jobs and then knowing the other jobs at least to some degree put all put put a, put a few more of your eggs in a couple more baskets and leave a leave one or two eggs in the really in the uh baskets that you're least interested in that would be my advice as for lords of verminion on the tournaments i think lords of verminion was way better than square enix intended to make it it has a great micro level play as well as decent macro level play it punishes poor mistakes properly and it is truly a skill-based rts which i didn't believe i'd be saying it's a lot of information to take in however and i think that it's going to be a long time before people fully understand the different metas and possibilities within Lords of Verminion. It's definitely a tough game to master. All right, so we had quite the long question that came in here. Uh, the first question I can answer without going into too much background. One, which video editing software are you using or do you have a recommended one for a beginner because I'm thinking about getting into YouTube for a while. Also an idea for promoting my free company somehow. Even if it's not helpful, making a video with only three members. Um, I wish I was doing vids like you just in German with my old FC members. So I use Sony Vegas Pro. Uh, Adobe Premiere is also really, really good. Those are the two that I would recommend when it comes to video editing software. Some recording softwares, open broadcast software, it works. I'm kind of leaning away from it now in favor of nvidia shadow play if i can see that if nvidia shadow play works the way i want it to seems like it works pretty pretty amazingly i just gotta double check to make sure that it works out okay the second question however they ask is regarding that free company he mentioned with only three people having issues recruiting for a free company I have any suggestion how I can find or recruit people for my free company, which are active? Should I try to find a different FC or static? I kind of even thought about switching server. Do you think creating or growing his own FC is kind of useless this late in the game? Where all the people are already in the FC of their choice and not willing to change, and one that just needs a full raid group? Because trying to promote people for my FC, which consists of only three members, comes kind of throwback. Yeah, getting a, a free company from only three members, unless you're literally willing to accept everyone and then start cherry picking people for raids, people have a little bit more like minded, is definitely going to be a tough one. Um, I've read through some. Of the history that you gave me here before uh regarding the, the number of people that you like to be online and also the more casual nature of which you want to approach end game content even though you want to take on the final coil and alexander savage so uh that's kind of rough uh only being able to do one or two days a week and even if you're trying to bump it up to three uh, but not wanting to sacrifice any part of your real life for the game is unfortunately a turn off nowadays now i'm not saying you need to go and turn your schedule upside down like i usually do when a new raid tier comes out but generally people want to know hey 
you're free on these nights. How many nights can you be available? You say three. three. Two to three nights is an acceptable amount of raid time for a lot of people, assuming the raid time is longer than a single lockout. It would need to be something more along the lines of probably like three lockouts. You know, you know, anywhere from four to four and a half hours is generally considered an acceptable amount of raid time. You're saying you can't find groups for that? There's plenty of groups for that, but it's hard to find the right ones. Uh, it seems like you said you've also been joining foreign groups, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're not, that maybe English isn't your first language or either that or you're English and you're trying to join European groups, which is going to be, that's just as rough. Um, it's kind of rough. You may need to join, yeah, foreign raid groups. If you're, if you're from Europe joining an American one, that's a lot easier, I feel, uh, generally because, uh, you know, us here in America, a lot of us are real lazy with learning multiple languages, like myself. Uh, not all of us, of course. I'm just one of, you know, some. So I can understand the struggle because I know quite a few people that speak other languages that come into raid groups, and I've seen that before. Uh, it's This doesn't sound like a, an easy situation for you, my man. Uh, switching servers is definitely an option. And with only turn 9 experience, though, the bigger issue is that you're going to have problems uh, finding people that really, really want to take you into Savage if you change servers. This is really something you have to build up on your own. You know, brand new static looking for completely inexperienced members. But unfortunately, when you get completely inexperienced members, you also run the risk of everyone growing resentful of each other because you're not meeting basic things such as beating Faust. You're also far more likely to have no screening process for the people that you're trying to join to see if they're actually good players because, well, you're just trying to get the eight people in. Uh, so there's a lot of things that can go wrong here, and it's something that you're probably going to have to, you're probably going to make a few friends, make a few enemies, but I think that maybe a server switch at this point might be in your best interest, but I would look at the servers that you have available as options first. That's the best thing I can really say for you right now, my friend. Next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. Thanks for answering my question last week. My question this week is, should a tank learn boss fights as a DPS? When I do boss fights like Extreme Primals for the first time in Party Final, I nearly always get told to change out the DPS and let someone else tank. They say I need to do the fights as a DPS to learn it. Fuck. I eventually learned the fights as a tank, but it would be better. First of all, I don't know who's telling you you have to learn the fights as a DPS. I guess it's because a DPS has nothing else to worry about except mechanics and their own DPS. So they want you to learn that. But that is... I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that sentiment at all. That's that's somebody trying to tell you, have as, have as few responsibilities as possible. That way you can see what the rest of the fight is like. And then you can go try to be responsible later. No, you want to be responsible. You want to learn how to be responsible and do the fights at the same time. Because otherwise it's two separate learning processes. So, I will answer the very basic question without the context. Should a tank learn boss fights DPS? I believe every person should, at some point, if feasible, it's not easy to do, it's not even something I've been able to accomplish, learn every fight as every role. It is so stupidly hard to be able to do that just because of the way the game works. That being said, it makes you a better player. When you learn, when you've tanked a fight for God knows how long, but you've never healed it, all of a sudden you heal it, you see where the spike damage is coming from. You know what cooldowns you have available. You know what cooldowns the tanks are going to use because they're the cooldowns that you are using. You know exactly what to anticipate, what to expect. You're able to better analyze the fight. Same with the DPS. Now, the DPS, less so, but it does help to see a fight from all perspectives because then as the DPS, you see, well, when the tank does this movement, I miss a positional. And, you know, as a tank, now I know that there are probably other DPS that are having the same issue. Maybe they're going left instead of right, but uh, it is a possible thing. So I'd say that it is beneficial as a player. Player, but I wouldn't say based on your situation that it holds any context and you should learn as a tank boss fights as a DPS this is sounds like one person told you this and I don't know what the hell they were thinking like no 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 don't tank just DPS so you can learn the fight that's like just they just want you to pass off responsibility and they just want it it just sounds like they want to get someone who's more experienced as a tank ultimately they just want to push you out of the position because you're not experienced as a tank in that position i don't know i don't like that i don't like the idea of pushing someone out of their position just because you want to get somebody how the hell else are people going to learn how to raid on their jobs if you just push them off to another job tell them to learn it on that instead of telling them to learn it on the job that they actually plan on playing not for the reasons that you've named, but yes, it is beneficial for tanks to play on multiple jobs. It's beneficial for everyone to play on multiple roles. All right, so we had a pretty long post here as well. Luckily, and I love you, question asker for this, for TLDRing it at the top. I love you for it. Good day, Mr. Happy. Love the side videos and a new viewer and poster. Of course, side videos. Uh, just after I say that at the beginning of the video. Hope these tombstones are soldiery. Why do you guys keep giving me soldiery? Why? Why is this a thing? Damn it. Wait, they are obsolete now. 
Great. And you said great too. Here's a cash shop minion. Can I give it away on stream? Because I don't want... Ah, yeah, I guess I'll take it. It's a gift from you. I'll take it. TLDR, if the story is too long to read, then at the end of the episode, you can read this before recording. Should I search the party finder, ask around to see if I can do raid content? Now, to give a little bit of context, I did read your story below first. And uh, this person is a paladin. They took a break for quite some time. They've come back now, but they're still working on the 3.0 story. Don't even worry about getting to raid content if you're still on the story. Don't even think about it. And don't worry about the relic weapons. Don't worry about anything else. Just finish that story. Take it one step at a time. Go into the new dungeons. Go into the new, you know, Alexander Normal. Look through the party finder for people looking for tanks. Just be willing to learn from as many people as possible. Uh, question number two. Should I learn more about my moves to maximize myself as Paladin? Yes. Learning the efficiency of your cooldowns. Learning. The thing is, when you're learning tank, you learn, you learn, relearn tank every fight you do. You learn how often a boss does an ability. You learn uh, which abilities need to be mitigated more. You know, what times that the healers aren't able to mitigate. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but yes, you should learn more about your moves to maximize yourself as a paladin. It's something you should do on any job. And three, should I pace myself and learn each move and do one thing at a time as a casual player that wants to raid a lot, wants to wander? It's more about looking about how your abilities mesh with one another. You know, you gotta, like, for example, as a paladin, usually you cross-class bloodbath. So, knowing that you can pair fight or flight and bloodbath together so you can get the most healing out of it while doing the most damage possible is something that is a very good skill to learn. Uh, again, learning when you can skip mechanics by using hollowed ground, learning, uh, you know, remembering to press spirits within or remembering to hold it if you need to silence. All those things should be learned in tandem. Yes, there are some specific things you'll probably have to spend more time on, on, but I wouldn't try to learn every single one of your moves one at a time. You need to learn how the job operates as a whole, and all you're doing is breaking that hole into multiple sections and not really learning them as a unit. All right, next question. Hi, Senor Feliz. First time asker, so I have a bonus of your choice. I don't know why I did it like this. Two weeks ago on State of the Realm when 3.1 came out, you mentioned something about quests that were pushed back to 3.15. Can you please say what they are called and what they really are? So what they really are, I'm not sure. They are, I am calling them the Scholisticate Side Story Quests. They were a group of side story quests that were brought up quite some time, and along with the animal weapons, they were pushed back to 3.15. To give you a degree of relevancy with them, they were considered the uh, replacement of the Hildebrand quest line before people demanded that the Hildebrand quest line continue. So while we may see Hildebrand still in this expansion, these were the initial quests in the new storyline that were originally intended to replace him. That is the relevancy of the Scholisticate side story quests. Next question. Sabi. <laughs> I don't know why. I've been a newly formed static about three weeks old that is progressing on A4 Savage. Good for you. However, we had to depart with both of our tanks, now looking for two new tanks. That sucks. <laughs> My question is, is there any reason the current meta to not have two warriors? We haven't really tried A4 Savage yet because of tank problems, so we don't know if a Paladin Dark is actually needed in the main tank slot for certain mechanics. Could you give us some advantages and disadvantages of having two warriors? Even though most people agree the double warrior dream is perfectly viable now, some people are worried about future content. And you just hit the nail on the head. Perfectly viable now may not be viable in future content. You you literally it's literally that's your one concern there is no reason with the gear available now you cannot run two warriors but one of those warriors needs to be prepared to play one of the other jobs if anything the thing i mentioned earlier where we had you know me playing monk ninja and our other dp other melee dps having dragoon monk almost similar here both of you warrior available one of you also have dark knight available one of you also have pallet available i say you whatever new tanks you have um but it's a serious it's a serious thought uh and i um, you just you literally i don't need to explain anymore you already hit the nail on the head perfectly viable now may not be viable in the future so diversifying always good besides it's nice to have the i mean unless you have a monk for other abilities again it, it's just about being flexible but having a variety of jobs and a variety of utilities available to the group and you know living dead has been a great utility for a lot of people especially mixed with white mages and benediction warrior is a great utility because it's the best job in the game right now hands down uh so you're good for now but you may not be good for later all right, we got two little questions right here. 14, do you know why we didn't get a Primal in 3.1? Because we got Extreme Thornton. That's why. All 2.x did a story Primal trial each. I know they added lots of bits, but I felt the story was a second thought. PS Cliffhanger, roll on 3.2 story. Uh, so pretty much the 3.1 story has nothing to do with, first of all, how long the patch took. This was what they intended to give us in the 3.1 story. 3.1 story was enjoyable for what it was, and I was happy with the story developments that came of it, and I'm looking forward to the future. Far more so than I did when at the end of 2.1 story, 
story, I didn't feel it was quite adequate. The reason why primals are not necessarily being rolled out in the main story anymore, first of all, we did get a primal, it was Thordon Extreme. I know that's no, that's not a new primal, but expect new primals to not be introduced in the main story. They still could be, but the OCP and team seem that they are shoehorning primals into the main story just because that's the means that they've always given us primals in the past. So, don't be surprised if they stop appearing in the main story altogether. Granted, I feel it's still okay as long as it has some merit. Not, by the way, we're having all these issues. If there's a primal out there you need to go take care of. Eh, I was always a little bit shaky about that use for them. So, that's why. Uh, General, I noticed many of the games you play are ones I have played or considered. I have a bit of gaming slum until Bloodborne DLC Tuesday. Guys, I'm going to be streaming that, by the way. Bloodborne DLC Tuesday. Be there. I'll make a video about it tomorrow. I'll make a video about it on Tuesday or something. Uh, not favorites. Do you have a recommended game? Currently working through Lords of the Fallen. Fall 4 has been so good. Fall 4 is exactly what I wanted it to be. I have I have been extremely pleased with Fall 4. And it had it's had a few glitches, but it's not been that bad. Uh, it's It's been better than Fallout 3 was for me, than New Vegas was for me, than Skyrim, than Oblivion were for me in terms of uh, glitches. Just a few things here and there. Some mostly positional glitches uh, when it comes down to the thing. Um... Other than that, Paladins and Overwatch, real solid. Overwatch is, of course, in beta, so if you didn't get invited, sorry, I can't play it. Paladins, having uh, beta right now, you can try and sign up for a key or buy a Founder's Pack. Blade and Souls coming out. Davillion's going into open beta. Full-on free-to-play launching before the end of the year as well. Plenty of games, actually. MMOs, MOBAs, uh, you know, FPSs, lots of different games. So keep your eye out. There's a lot of great things, but I will be playing Bloodborne. See you in the Old Hunters. All right, so the next question was a little bit long, so I'm just going to grab the question right here at the bottom. So my question is basically, should the Diadem only offer eye level 200 or 205 gear, then the next patch only be equal or slightly above upgraded Tombstone, and then Savage can always have the I'm the best gear. Which I feel the Gob Coat Twine Weekly from the Void Arc should be enough. So, when it comes to 210 gear from the Diadem, I do not care that it is 210 and that it is, in some cases, well, when I mean, you actually get good rolls, better than Savage or Esoteric grade gear. Here's why. In patch 3.2, I am predicting that the, net, that the Savage gear will not be the entry-level gear into the next raid. That is correct. I am assuming, nothing confirmed, that the next basic raid tier for Alexander, the second part of Alexander, the normal mode version, will grant I-220 gear. Now, 10 item levels should be enough to make up for the 5 to 7 main stat difference that some of these god pieces have on the diadem. Granted, Body and legs are probably the two most sought after pieces because if you can get a best in slot uh, diadem 210 body, it's likely you won't get an upgrade for Alexander normal immediately. So it's probably that's probably the best option. That also depends on you know what the loot system is like for Alexander normal, what the next prime will drop, you know what the new item levels on the dungeons are. So a lot of things are going into place. We are either about to enter a form of Final Fantasy 14 where we get complete content resets every two patches. I don't think that's going to be the case. What I mean by that is that dungeon gear in 3.2 would replace old raid gear. It's a system that World of Warcraft has used for quite a long time to some degree. Granted, if you had the highest of high end gear, it usually lasted a bit longer. Um, it was just so people could catch up. They could feel more adequate. But with the way item level is structured in 14, I don't see that happening. Uh, so the other option is just that, the, that the item level is just going to be raising at more incremental levels. So you'll see more of a 30 to 40 item level bump every, uh, every even numbered patch instead of a 20 item level bump, bump every even numbered patch. That is the path I believe we're going down. So having a couple of diadem pieces that are greatest doesn't really bother me because guess what? I just get enough thrill out of eating Savage. You know, I don't need the gear to be the best. In fact, I'm happy as a Savage Raider, there's a way for me to progress my character on an odd-numbered patch, something we've never had before. All right, so unfortunately, we have quite a few questions left, and I don't have time to get to all of them, very unfortunately, but I'm going to grab... We'll see if I can grab two. Maybe I can grab another one. I have, like, five questions left here, so want to get this video done, want to get it rendered. Got to re-record that part at the beginning like I forgot, so... Uh, let's just do this. So, hey, Happy, I got two questions for you. Should be quick to answer. Off the topic of 14, what do you use to record, stream, and edit videos when you have to use a console? I use an Elgato HD60 Pro, which plugs directly into my motherboard on my computer and records quite well. I can use multiple things to actually record that, but often I will end up using open broadcast software or the built-in software for Elgato, both of which work pretty adequately. 
On the topic of 14, oh, yeah, oh, no, I answer other questions. On the topic of 14, do you think Square Enix will adjust Lords of Dominion tournaments? On my server, there were only seven people that did it, and despite of being allowed 30 matches, the player who won only did 10. They still won. You're allowed 30 matches, you're not forced to play 30 matches, however. Um, the only thing that they can really do is try to encourage people a little bit more. Lords of Verminion, from what I understand, does not have a great payout when it comes to MGP. It does if you win. It doesn't have, and it does, of course, if you participate in the tournament, but it generally doesn't have a great MGP uh, payout. It reminds me a lot of when Chocobo Racing, when uh, Triple Tri, oh, not Triple Tri, yeah, when Triple Tri first came out, um, or just generally when the Gold Salsa first came out, things had much lower payouts. It's on that scale, uh, and I think they need to tone that up a little bit more so that people feel uh, less threatened. It's also because Lords of Verminion, like I said earlier, really hard game, really, really micro level, really high skill tier game, which is weird for me to say it's not starcraft but it's higher tier skill than i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be little little e like playing a 2.0 bard uh just running all over the place with stuff but it's actually pretty deep uh and your strategy has to be pretty sound for it to actually be uh, efficient so i don't see them adjusting the tournaments i see them bumping the pay grade of the tournaments out though and the last question I'm going to answer, though, I will say that one other question, I will just say, watch the patch 3.1 lore preview, uh, lore overview that we did for State of the Realm last week. You'll get your answer to your question there. Uh, but this person says, hope you're having a good Sunday, Monday, Haps. Here's a nice and short question. Do you think Square Enix will ever change the tomes gotten from the main scenario roulette to law for level 60s to incentivize more people to do it and to lower queue times for a bit new players trying to do 2.0 story to get into Heaven's Ward? Also, the preview videos were sexy. Keep up the good work. Wish you a Mr. Happy Thanksgiving, too. Oh, I almost forgot to wish you a Happy I'll add that to the beginning of the video as well. Man, I am so bad at these things. I always forget the important stuff. I was so wrapped up in my thankfulness that I forgot to actually say the whole point of that speech at the beginning of the video where I go, this is what I'm thankful for. That was the whole point. I forgot to do that. Oh my God. Well, now you're going to see two edits at the beginning of the video. Now one edit and I'll just include the happy Thanksgiving part in the same edit. There, that works. So, uh, do I think they'll ever do that? Mm, if they can add a thero, uh, a thero chemical research facility to it, which really annoys me that it's not on there. That's a no roulettes. If anything, they just need to make ethereal a thero chemical research facility make like make it worth like 250 law or some shit. I'm sorry, yeah, 250 law or some shit. Make it worth a crap ton of law. Obviously, that then ruins the level 50 roulette because anyone who wants law is going to do that outside of the poetics you get from the level 50 roulette. But make it worth a ridiculous number so that way people feel incentivized to do it. What I'm hoping is we get another new main scenario dungeon that's not part of the two dungeon limit that we have and that they eventually group those together and we get a main scenario roulette for level 60. But until then, that's the best that I can possibly give into it. But I don't think they'll add law to the level 50 rule at any time soon. The poetics, the EXP, that's most likely what people are going to stick to. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Mondays with Mr. Happy. Remember, if you want to ask a question, go to the description of the video. Click on the link to the Dream Network forums, and it will take you to a set of forums where you can actually ask your questions. Now, let's do this again since I forgot it at the beginning of the video. Although I've edited it in at this point. There, look at all those beautiful videos. This is just a few videos. There's the Fallout montage. We have, um, what else should I put here? What should, I don't, well, I could put the Pharaoh Serious one, but if I put, if I put right here in the middle, right here, if I put the Pharaoh Serious one, it's going to be at the four minute and nine second mark of the video because it's a great meme that you're going to love. Uh, and I'll figure out what the third video is going to be. Maybe I'll make it the Fallout playlist or something like that because I started a playlist for that, but I still need to add the rest of the videos to it. Anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you on the stream this week. Don't forget, events, December 4th, be at the stream. Tuesday, State of the Realm, be there. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's GMT minus 5, in case you were wondering, for the 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, don't forget, we have Blade and Soul this week. We're going to have a lot of Blade and Soul this week. We're going to have Bloodborne on Tuesday. Hopefully, we have some Devillion coming up more in the couple weeks. And, of course, more Final Fantasy XIV action on my live stream. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next week. And until then, take care.